Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the print orientations and how I slice up the files for the ZA13. We got three MFs in here too, so I got duplicates. Uh, just center it to the build plate. I do this orientation for the side buttons. I'm going to trim that off the final one. I don't know why that little ledge is there. But yeah, I do manual supports, which is L. And I just do basically like a little E without the little middle bit. Because then when we slice this, we have no support material in the circle, and that's what I want. This overhang print's, like, fine enough. You know, it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. The magnets still sit in there. And then this is good. Pretty easy to remove. The problem is, if you go, like, if you do too many supports out here, if you get too close to the circle, what ends up happening is it'll put at least half of the support material in this circle, which I'm just trying to avoid. And then sometimes this bit fuses a little. I don't know. It's, it's annoying. So this is why I do it like this. You could print at 90 degrees, but then if you do, just make sure, like here. If you do it like this, which I don't recommend because of the circle, and I don't know, it's just weird. You have to make sure that, let's clear this, you have to make sure that this area gets supports. So you'd probably do something like this. That looks about right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I designed it to be going the other way. Same deal with the front side buttons, exact same. Okay, so for the battery holder, you'll see that, you know, this stuff is, uh, you know, different heights. You basically have to support the whole bottom. Uh, I would not do support on build plate. I would, again, manually support it because you don't ever want supports in these circles. They're really annoying to get out. So go like this. Leave yourself a bit of edge room so it doesn't grow into the circle. Like here, if I go like this, Versus if I leave it like a straight cut over here, we should see a difference in supports. You can obviously play with your settings so it doesn't do it. It's just, you know, this is the simplest way. Yeah, we're basically putting lines on everything on the bottom. Something like this should be fine. Go like that. And so you'll see how this one, I left a little barrier here, right? Whereas this one, I got a little close, but I didn't even put them in the middle, and it wants to put material down here. I don't like that because it's annoying to clean out. Sometimes it fuses. It shouldn't because it's not touching the build plate here, so it should be fine. But, you know, just to avoid it, I would do this. Pretty much goes the same way for this battery holder. Like, literally the same. It's just like, like this, essentially. Side buttons are the exact same, so now we'll do the bottom. Okay, so for this, this doesn't matter, but I'm going to rotate it 180, so like printing it like this. So go to print settings, and you're going to want to make sure you do external perimeters first. And I also avoid crossing perimeters, I'm not sure how much that matters. So I print this without supports, and it prints fine. So when we slice it, Jesus took longer than I'd like. The areas to worry about are obviously in blue. Don't worry about these overhangs. They're irrelevant. The thing here is my cooling. Uh, it's not amazing or anything, but it's good enough that this area prints just fine without supports. Uh, if you want to, you can try using supports there. The issue is getting supports cleanly out of this area under is just a huge pain. So that's why I don't do it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this area prints fine for me. And then the other area of concern is the upper side button area. I usually have to take a deburring tool and then I just like run it over it because you'll get a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, falling filament from the overhang. It generally speaking prints well enough for me though. Again, you could do supports, but the reason I don't is because when you add supports here, I'll try to just do them on the outside. Here, I'll even make the circle smaller. What happens is it generates them inside. And, I mean, I could probably spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to not generate them inside with settings, but I just really don't want to. So I just deal with the overhang, and I just clean it up a little. But yeah, important that you do external perimeters first, because otherwise you'll see lines... Here, what's the view I want? Six? Uh, yeah, here we go. You'll see this line and this line. Uh, they'll show through the perimeter if you don't do external perimeter first because of the way it is, because of this little transition bit right here. So, I mean, I don't know, up to you. 
And then for the top, I have it in a flat orientation. Uh, this is because you will need to change this. Do not print it like this. I'm going to print it forward, not that it matters. So I tilt it anywhere from 55 to 85 degrees. Uh, 55, you probably need nicer cooling. But Oopsies, wrong way. Negative 55. So if I print it like this, I almost always just put support on the bottom and nowhere else. So like this. Uh, if you print it at this, this is 55 degrees. If you print it like this with just those supports, uh, the issue will be this particular area right here, which I'll do in red. Uh, what is it, right click? Yeah. This area will print kind of funny, so you might want to add more supports. That's why I tilt it more than 55 degrees. Additionally, if you want to, uh, make sure your adhesion is good. And you can do supports here. Basically what happens is uh, this stuff will print just fine. This will print fine. Uh, right here, though, you'll have just a little bit of wisps from it cooling weird because it doesn't really bridge because it doesn't connect. At least I think that's what it is. But the problem is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slice it real quick. If you don't have good adhesion, this will probably knock over at some point. Unless, you know, you just have it down pat. I usually print with a brim, too, when it comes to this. So that's relevant. We'll reslice it with a brim. Even with a brim, this tends to move for me. So if you are going to do this, just make sure you either, you know, your bed adhesion is great, use a glue stick, or, you know, something like this. This part never moves for me. I don't have any issue with the main brim. It's just this little side bit. Or if you wanted to, you could, of course, extend it. So you go, I don't know, something closer to this, and then you have a more consistent, uh, like, little support structure over here. This would work too. And you just have to, you know, clean off a little more supports. But yeah, so I went 55, right? Where's my little rotation? Okay. So tilted another 30. Again. Here. Tilted another 30. This is about as high as I've tilted it otherwise. Uh, again, you might have some weird prints like right here if you only support it down here. Otherwise, you should be good. Same deal though. You know, probably want supports up here if your cooling's not amazing. My cooling's, like, fine, but I still get, uh, you know, slightly uh, wispy or, like, you know, weird bits right here. So, it is what it is. It's up to you and your cooling. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the grips. So, this is the left, this is the right. Obviously, this has the side button, punch out, and then this doesn't. Uh, they could be a little bigger, too. I just size them so that you can cut lizard skins, lizard grips, whatever they're called. So lay them on their face. Uh, I have these at two millimeters. You could, you know, if you want to save filament, you could just cut a bit. Oh, I can't do that here. Go like this. Cut them down to like 1.2 or one millimeter. Go like that. And then the final piece to print is just this little poker file. Uh, it's just to nudge the magnets into place just in case you don't have something or, you know, if you, screwdriver is the only thing you can use because they're magnetic, so they're going to pull away. Okay, so this is kind of unorthodox, but I'm going to go over how to put this together in Fusion instead of in real life because essentially uh, the camera angle will be something like this, and it's really hard to actually see any details because I just, you know, it's my phone, and, like, all my fingers get in the way, and it's, it's very hard to work with. Like, it's cramped, rather, not hard to work with. But yeah, so these are essentially the magnets off on the side. You'll need more than five, but I just have an arbitrary amount over here. Like the bottom, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty sure it's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, ignore this one. This one isn't used. So six spots for magnets, and then you use two for the side buttons, and then two for up top. So only ten. But I just have an arbitrary amount here. And essentially, when it comes to the side buttons, I have these little like chamfers or like ramps to them. Uh, the only one that's really kind of annoying is this one here, which you're just going to have to put here and then push. I have a little printed piece that is, you know, just literally a plastic piece to push the little magnets with. You'll see it in the files. Uh, essentially what I do with them is I stack them all on the side like this, and I make sure they're all facing the same way, and then I just leave that tower, and then I don't tip it over and stuff. That way I can make sure they're all facing, you know, plus or minus, and then I stack them in. So I recommend you slide them in. And then just get a dab of glue, like on the, you know, under them or something, or on the side. Uh, they'll fit fine regardless, unless your printer is like horribly calibrated. Except they might jiggle just a little. Uh, I don't expect that they'll move out of their, 
place necessarily. It's just, I assume you don't want to hear any rattling. So you probably want to put a little bit of glue. Or I suppose, you know, if you like chuck it against the wall or something, they might like, you know, come out if you don't glue them, but don't do that. So you're going to start with the magnets. Don't put it in the PCB or anything. Start with the magnets. So go, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and six for the spots. Get those all into place. Next, put on the main PCB with the scroll wheel. You're going to use this screw post, this screw post, and this one. You'll probably need a thin screwdriver to make this, or like a really thick one will work because it'll collide with this, so you'll have to screw it at an angle. Uh, I'd also recommend like just pre like tapping all these with take the smallest screw and get here, 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 and here as well, as well as the others. You don't have to use this one. It's a guide for the PCB so it slots into place correctly, but you don't have to screw it because it's basically impossible to work with here unless you, I don't know, have like an angled screwdriver or something. So I don't do it. So screw the PCB into place. Make sure the scroll wheel's good. You know, clicks good. It can be kind of annoying. Uh, I bring the PCB in from the front and back it up at an angle. Uh, but the on and off switch can be kind of tricky since you can't just drop it directly down because of this overhang. But it is what it is. So once you do that, then you want to do the side buttons and enable those. I have them in their correct spot here, but you're actually going to want to put them in backwards. Uh, they, they each have a magnet spot as well, so put, put the magnet in and don't glue those in because you're going to want to, like you can glue the ones under it obviously so it doesn't rattle, but don't glue these because you might put them the wrong way and then, you know, you essentially wasted your side button. So you're going to want to put these in backwards actually. Like, I need a circle face. This is this will probably work, yeah. So put the back one in, man. Okay, put the back one in under the back overhang, backwards like this, and then spin it in medially, like this. You can leave it 90 degrees like this too, about 90 degrees. You can leave it like this while you put in the front one. Same deal with the front one. Yeah, circle axis. Okay. You're going to want to put the front one in backwards like so, and then spin it in medially. You may have to slightly rotate this one while you do it, but, you know, same deal. And then you're just going to obviously twist them so that they're facing their correct way. Oh, um, I, you're going to want to, you, you can do this while they're, uh, like, in place, but probably before you put in the side buttons, screw in the G305 PCB screw right here. Uh, as far as depth, basically, that's just how you're going to adjust, uh, you know, pre-travel with your side buttons essentially. I would screw it in as much as it goes and then back it out like two twists or something like that as a starting point. And then just put them back into place. And it's annoying, you'll have to pull out the PCB like probably two times or so while you get the side buttons to feel how you want them to feel. But that's just what you're gonna have to do. And I'm gonna overlay a picture right now because once you do actually get these into place, So once you do actually get them into place and you put the PCB in there, uh, you'll note it's a it's a pretty tight fit so that they don't rotate because the PCB the switches are going to sit in between these these like uh, I don't know, rectangles. Uh, when you have to pull the PCB out, it's stuck in there pretty well. You're going to want to put something under here and then lightly press up and use it as a lever to force the PCB out of place. So once you get the side buttons done. Uh, we're going to go to the top, this thing right here, and hide these. So as far as the top goes, it's pretty simple. Again, two slots for magnets back here, back here. You're not using the middle. Uh, same deal. Like I said, I keep these all in the same orientation, so I know. But, you know, don't glue these in, at least right away. Put them in loosely and then snap them in the back just to actually check to make sure you have the right fit because you don't want it repelling. Uh, you can glue them in once you know that it's the correct orientation. And then you're just going to use some G305 PCB screws right here. Uh, I would probably, again, screw them in as much as they go and then back them out like two twists or something. It's kind of arbitrary. You're just going to be adjusting how much you know pre-travel you have. But, I mean, you should have them pretty screwed in. Uh, I don't expect that you'll be leaving them, like, you know, half exposed or something. I expect, uh, I, I haven't measured the distance, but it's probably like, you know, four tenths of a millimeter or something like that. And then you're just going to put the top on the bottom. It's pretty simple. It's just a magnetic. So it'll fit something like this. The 
this is obviously slightly off because I think the gap at the front's slightly bigger because it ends up sitting at like a half a degree angle or something. Like obviously, go like this. It ends up looking something slightly closer to this usually with like FDM tolerances. And then you're going to get the battery. It's going to go over the PCB into the two little magnet spots here. You have two different battery holders. You have one that holds a AAA. And then I have a little circle here because if you have the little rechargeable top, you can just put that there. I would face it up because if you do the rechargeable AAA, but then you face the, the magnetic part down, what happens is when you go to put the little, uh, the little wire down here, it tends to pull. And then if you have it down here, it's really hard to get in a, into spot. So that's why I do it up top. Uh, if you're doing a rechargeable AAA, I would probably just put like a dab of hot glue on the side here or something like that. Uh, I don't expect that it'll move much or anything, but again, you know, if, if you're never going to change the battery, then you don't really care. And then the 675 is pretty simple. Obviously, you can tell which end goes where because there's a bunch of room in one end. It's basically the same thing. It's not the most elegant battery design, but, you know, it works. And then if you want to be really, you know, not safe, but... If you want to be really sure, because you're not going to be hot gluing this, because you're going to switch the battery when it dies in like two weeks or whatever, uh, I would just put like a zip tie around the circle or you know a piece of tape or something just to be like extra sure. But you shouldn't have to. Otherwise, I mean that's pretty much it.